All right, just over a month ago, Apple unveiled the new iPad 10 with a redesign for the entry-level tablet with some welcome changes, but also some that were not so welcome. This is the good and the bad of the iPad 10. Let's talk about it. So to start off, the iPad 10 is pretty good. It comes with quite a few new and good features that many people like, starting with the design. Yeah, Apple finally went away from the curved design language of the iPad 9, and now every single iPad kinda looks the same, which isn't a bad thing, actually. The screen is all screen now. There's no home button, no notch, no lip. It's actually pretty clean looking, and you really can't tell too much of a difference between this one and its bigger brother, the iPad Air, funnily enough. But you can surely tell the difference between this and its other older brother, the iPad 9, because this tablet is far more expensive. Yeah, the iPad 10 comes at a hefty cost compared to the previous gen, iPad 9. It was expected that Apple would eventually increase the price of the starter model of the iPad, but man, $450 retail. That's a $120 increase from last gen. And for some people, that can actually be a deal breaker. I mean, can you imagine the looks on the iPad parents' faces when they realize that their one-year-old child will cost them $450 just to keep them entertained for a little while. Gosh, man. But Apple was very smart about this and is still selling the iPad 9 at the same price. So yeah, not a bad move from Apple, but a discount probably and really should be given to the iPad 9. Next, we've got a good one. One that we'll hopefully see with the next iPhone soon too, USB-C. Yeah, this is a port that many iPad fans have been clamoring about for a while. It's pretty ubiquitous with nearly every Apple product. So having one charger for all your devices would make make things less complicated. And now you can use many accessories you might already have, barring in mind that they are compatible. But if they aren't, congrats, at least now you don't need a dongle. <laughs> but yet, you do actually need a dongle for an Apple original product, the Apple Pencil. For some reason, Apple decided to keep the Generation 1 Apple Pencil and created the worst workaround for its charging. You need to use a dongle to connect to your pencil to plug into your iPad, which is rough, even worse than the other funny way to plug in the Apple Pencil. It's just not a great design at all. And yet, Apple really did it. And one thing that Apple does give every iPad is a good battery life. Each iPad doesn't really disappoint in this area, but it is something worth bringing up. This tablet will probably last you all day, which is amazing. You can do everything on it for work and still have battery life to spare when you get home. It's all around great and something that really should be talked about more. And also something that really should be talked about more is the storage. It's terrible on this tablet. For $450, you get how much? Man, you get 64 gigabytes. Imagine, for that much money, you still need to pay Apple even more for a reasonable amount of storage. And the worst part is, to upgrade the storage, it's an extra $150, making it literally cost the same as the iPad Air, an objectively better iPad. My gosh, Apple, what are you doing? Also, man, this company really knows how to do business. But also, one other good feature of this device is the landscape camera. Functioning more like a laptop's webcam, the front camera now being in landscape mode is better for meetings. For me personally though, I do think it does look a little wonky when you hold the tablet in the typical portrait or vertical mode, but it does make sense why it's a good feature. It allows for the user to be easily centered on the screen, and also be easier for moving your eyes from the camera to the display. But with that said, the last bad feature of this device would be the headphone jack. It is extremely disappointing that with all these features that are good, we do lose something in exchange. I know few people use the headphone jack, but I still do, and I think a few others might as well. It's just a shame that we're losing this connectivity for virtually no reason right now. But it does definitely boost the sales of the AirPods. So again, Apple definitely knows how to do business. But besides that, here are some reviewer acclaims and criticisms to highlight with this tablet, including things we've already discussed, such as the new design, but also other things like the screen. And now, let's get on to my verdict. So, this iPad has been out for over a month now. So then is it worth it? Well, hmm. Good question. Actually, a lot of people would say no, which to be fair, does make sense. It's not a crazy upgrade, although there are new components, a cool redesign, and USB-C. But again, besides that, the iPad is still the same. It's nothing too much different. So let me ask again, is it worth it? Well, probably for specific people. I've got three different routes for those who are looking into this iPad. Number one, if you want cheap, get the iPad 9. It's far more cost effective and is still very good for most people. It's worth taking a look at. Next, number two, if you want something newer and are okay with the increase in price, get the iPad 10. 
but probably with upgraded storage. It's the newest iPad with all the bells and whistles that you might want. And lastly, number three, since you are considering the iPad 10 with upgraded storage, you could potentially check out the iPad Air as well. Look, at the upgraded price of the iPad 10, you're in iPad Air territory. So might as well take a look at that as well. But don't get caught into the Apple iPad price trap, which as you keep upgrading your device, you get closer and closer to the next tier, which you'll then upgrade again and again. So yeah, a little complicated of an answer, but that's kind of my thoughts on it. It's a good tablet, but is it the right tablet for you? That's up to you to decide. And that was the good and the bad of the iPad 10. I hope this video helped, and I hope to see you again soon. My name is Cyrus. It's spelled like Cyrus, but not like Rooster. Just take out the terror. Thank you very much for watching, and have a wonderful day. Peace.